okay uh, let's start so in the last class we started to see uh, how to make circuits that generate a constant voltage reference and the basic starting point was we observed that if you have a forward bias diode the voltage across that diode is kind of constant so uh, we decided to pump in a sufficiently large current through a diode and this voltage they call it the eb1 that is kind of constant even if this voltage or this current changes this is roughly constant but unfortunately if i change the temperature what happens to the voltage yeah how does it change increase or decrease it reduces and this is what we called as uh, ctat or complementary to absolute temperature behavior but we wanted something that is constant across temperature so the basic idea is to go and add another voltage that has the opposite behavior so that the two the two of them get cancelled and uh, to get the and this is called the ptat or proportional to absolute temperature and to get the ptat voltage we basically took another diode pass another current and then took the difference between the two diode voltages right and later we modified it we said that we'll pass in the same current but we'll put n diodes in parallel so that the current here is different and uh, this if i take the difference between these two do you remember what this was Hmm. But for what is VB one? VT on. Let's say IS VB two. I mean, what is the current through one diode here? Huh? I one by n. So what does it simplify to? VT on of n. Right. So this what you see uh, proportional behavior. and then finally we have to add the two so this is the ptat voltage so we need to add the ctat voltage ctat is basically one diode drop ptat is the difference between two diode drops so to get the final output we decided to basically take this ctat guy and added it with some constant times the ptat voltage So if I simplify it, we get, we got something like V B one times uh, one plus K P minus K P times V B two. So this simply means that I need to give V B one to a non-inverting amplifier with this gain, V B two to an inverting amplifier. So that kind of uh, let's let me go here. Yeah. So that's basically what we did here. We took V B one and formed a non-inverting amplifier, V B two to an inverting amplifier. And when we did that, uh, what determines the gain Kp now? The ratio R2 by R1. But we want a voltage that is independent of temperature. What can you say about this gain now? Does it change with temperature? Since we are taking it as ratio of two resistors, it is okay because indip. I mean, individually the resistors values will change. But if you use two similar kind of resistors, the ratio is kind of the same. Right? That's basically like uh, relative grading. It's okay even if you do if you didn't do an exam well, as long as everyone else in the class also didn't do well, right? The same thing. So that basically gave rise to the circuit, and then finally we saw this current sources were redundant because the op amp itself is giving the required current. So that uh, gave rise to the final structure. So here we noticed we seem to have both positive and negative feedback, and for the circuit to be stable. at dc there should be a negative feedback so which means the negative feedback should dominate the positive feedback and that's what was happening here so that we saw and so let me copy this yeah yeah let me copy this guy and so this is the first circuit uh we came across so here as you know the virtual ground enforces this voltage also to be vb1 this is vb2 so what is the current flowing through r1 what is it yeah i'll say delta veb by r1 and what kind of behavior it has with respect to temperature 
it has positive because we take the difference between two EBs that is kind of positive. So I'll call it I P tad. Now what is the current flowing through R2? Yeah, V out minus, okay, let's like, write maybe I R2 is V out minus V B1 by R2. But uh, can you say anything about its temperature behavior? What can you say about these two currents? Same. So then what can you say about the temperature dependence of this current? That will also have positive temperature dependence. So the current flowing through R2 is also the P tat current. Again, I'm assuming the resistor doesn't change because finally we are taking ratios of resistors so that won't come into picture. Okay. So, uh, so this current is P tat. So what can you say about this current? What is the value of this current? It is basically V out minus V B1 by R2. This we have already established to be a P tat current. So here also the current flowing through the diode is P tat. Okay. So at this point, again you should be asking me a question. So since you are not asking, I will ask you. So remember this entire premise was based on the starting point that yeah, we started off by saying we will pump in a constant current through a diode, then the voltage across the diode has this C tat behavior. But now this current is no longer constant. In our final circuit, this current seems to have a P tat behavior. But luckily it turns out even if this is the case, the voltage is still C tat, but of course the slope will be different. So that you have to rely on simulator and find. So that is why it is still okay. Cool. So yeah, towards end we looked at uh, another uh, variant of band gap. Again, you can look at it in two different ways. One way is basically to observe that this op amp is what is delivering this p tat current to the two branches. So if I can somehow have another arrangement wherein I have another current source with the exact value i p tat and pass it through this same branch. So i p tat current flows through R2, R1 and the end diodes in parallel. Then this will be my again, uh, yeah, this will be my output. And if I call it Vx, what will this be equal to? Voltage across this. Huh? I mean, look at these two. I am pumping in the same current IP tad. So if I look at the voltage here, what will that be equal to? Vb1. Okay. So, which means in principle, if I know what this current is exactly, I can put a current source there and that will give me the correct view and this will be set to VB1. But unfortunately, you can't have a predetermined value of this current source and put it. There is going to be variations. So, we need to have a variable current source. And again, uh, we, now we need to figure out how do we vary this. So, one point to sense is this Vx. So we can see if this Vx is equal to Veb1 or not equal to Veb1 and based on that you can basically go and tune this. So what kind of current source is this? It's a voltage controlled current source. So this we can replace it by a PMOS and then make the circuit. So let me do that. So something we did in the last class, I'm just repeating. So I have PMOS as the voltage controlled current source and then I have R2, R1 and the end diodes in parallel. Okay, So this is VEB2. This is my V out. If I call it Vx, ideally you want it to be set to VEB1. So this we have to do using negative feedback. So I will take VEB1 and then what do I do? I have to compare Vx with VEB1. So let us say we compare it. And then go and tune this current here. So of course now I asked you to figure out the signs of op amp, so I will not do it. You will find that this will be the signs. Okay. Take it as an exercise and work out. Do this. And the last part of the puzzle is to 
generate the EB1. How do I generate the EB1? I'll basically have to pass the same current here through one diode here. That will generate the diode drop. So for making sure the current in this branch is also same as this current, what do we do? We mirror the current using another identical PMOS transistor. Something like this. Okay. Just draw it neatly. Okay. Great. So again, the other way to uh, look at the same circuit is, see earlier we just had an op amp connecting to the output like this. So if you loosely speaking, this op amp is directly driving some kind of a resistive load, right? So uh, as you know, for driving resistive load, what do you do? You use a, a two stage OTA. So you can think of it as putting another second stage common source and that guy is driving the resistive load. So there are multiple ways in which you can uh, interpret the same set. Yeah, we have to figure out. I asked you to figure out. You think about it again, do the same experiment. You increase the voltage and then see what is increasing more, right? Finally, this should drop. Yeah, that, that's inverted. Okay. So again, uh, what can you say about the current here? What behavior it has? Huh? It's a p-tat current. It, I mean, that's what we finally want, right? So here also we have the same p-tat current. Okay. So the output voltage, if you see, we obtain it as follows. It is the drop across R2 plus VB1, right? So it's essentially I p-tat times R2, right? So this is giving the t-tat portion of the current, sorry, voltage. This is the c-tat and you uh, using an appropriate R2 and R1, you get the required scaling factor so that the temperature dependence in the two terms cancel. Now, of course, uh, you can get the same thing using slightly different variant also. So can make slight modification to the circuit. Let me just show that. So instead of doing this, see, I already have a p-tat current generated. So I want to get an output voltage as follows. I p-tat times R2 plus VEB1, right? So here I am getting the output in the same branch like this. So instead, what I can do is this, I don't do this. I go and mirror the current to another PMOS transistor. So now this current is also IP tat. So how will I generate this voltage now? I mean, I have this IP tat current. I need to get a voltage which is IP tat times R2. So what do you do first? You put an R2, but the final voltage is this plus VED1. What do you do? You can put another diode here. Again, remember, uh, this voltage is obtained when you pass this current IP tat through one diode. I am doing the same thing. I am mirroring the same current through an identical diode. So this voltage will naturally become P tat. And since, sorry, C tat. So this will be the C tat. And the drop will be P tat. And then you get the total. This is also another variant. Correct. So right, right. Uh -huh. Okay, that is simply because this is basically not one diode, right? You have n diodes in parallel. So it need not be the same. I mean, basically what you are saying, what we are doing here is I have <laughs> one diode. Mm -hmm. I am basically putting n diodes in parallel. So the current flowing through one particular diode is going to be smaller. So the voltages will not be equal exactly, right? I mean, again, the IV characteristics is this. So uh, for one, the voltage is this, for another voltage might be here. Okay. Approximately you can say it's zero, but if you look at it clearly, it is not the case, right? Is okay?
cool yeah and okay it turns out in practice you can make this uh, band gap reference without using an op amp also so i can show you one variant of that so if you find i mean if you are lazy to make an op amp you can actually get away with it and the ah okay where should i take the output here good question ah where do i take the output yeah this so, okay. one sorry i mean yeah, for uh, for a mosfet to carry a particular current what what do you need i mean what does the current depend on in mosfet what voltage vgs right so i have the same gate voltage same source voltage it's going to pass right that's all see that is you do diode connection you should understand why that's coming about right the diode connection you do to generate the required gate voltage here the gate voltage is generated by this guy the op amp is making this right see the diode connection is a negative feedback here also you have a negative feedback forcing this voltage okay uh -huh. yeah i mean there, there is no i mean uh, this is this is also something you can do again each implementation will have some differences some pros and cons but i'm just throwing out all options current reference that's okay i mean this is basically a voltage reference which is independent of temperature right so here if let us say the current changes with temperature it's okay the what do you need from this op amp finally you just need a high gain if it's 1000 or 1100 i don't care right so so yeah uh, as we were saying you can also do it without op amp so let's actually see how we can do that and for that let's understand what's happening here and why do we need the op amp in the first place so look at the two branches here so basically the uh, pmos transistors here what they are doing huh they are making sure the currents in the two branches are same now what is the op amp doing here hmm? it is making sure these two voltages are same right so if i can somehow do the same thing without using an op amp the circuit is going to be still fine okay so let me see how we can do that so i'll erase this guy so my goal is to keep vx to be equal to vy okay uh, actually let me push it here let me make it very generic so what i have is basically something here and something here my goal is to make sure that the currents in the two branches are equal not just that these two voltages should be equal fine now how can i make uh, currents to be equal i mean if i know the current here how can i make the current here to be equal current mirror so one obvious thing is to basically sense the current here now i'll do this gate connection here because that's what will generate the voltage and then do this this will obviously make sure the currents are equal but can you comment about these two voltages again if you first to a first order if you ignore channel length modulation the current only depends on vgs so this voltage is now set whereas this voltage can be anything in the world so this will if you connect it directly it's not going to work this okay but this is a decent starting point because it is at least doing one half of the work so now we need to have a provision to make sure that the voltages here they are equal now let us say i have some voltage in principle i should be able to connect the two here but that will introduce loading and all sorts of effect so how can i connect that voltage without loading some kind of a buffer and how do you make the buffer common common drain so where do i apply the input where i take the output i'll take it at the apply the input at the gate this was so sim i apply some voltage here vb i'll do the same thing here okay. so 
so as long as the currents here are equal the gate to source voltages will be same so which means this voltage will be vb minus the appropriate vgs drop and i already have equal currents flowing here so i can basically okay Do this, right? Now the last part of the puzzle is how do I generate this voltage VB, right? And again, this VB should be uh, such a voltage that it carries the current flowing in this branch, right? And this current is basically copied here and mirrored here. So let us say this is the PMOS current, this is the NMOS current. If I find that the PMOS current is greater than the NMOS current, what can you say about this voltage? Let us say VP, huh? That will increase. And in this case, what should be the corrective action I should take? If PMOS current is greater than the NMOS current, I should what should I do? I'd increase what? I should increase NMOS current. And how do I increase NMOS current? I should increase VB. Now I see already VP is increasing. So what can I do? So this is uh, this is something that will make sure that the currents here are equal and the voltages are equal, right? Again, this is ignoring channel length modulation. And typically, sometimes people call this a floating mirror. This keeps the current same and the voltage the same uh, in the branches. So now this is something you can use here. Is this clear? So now tell me. Uh, is there a unique way in which I can connect this here, or there are different ways in which I can connect it here? Yeah, two ways, right? Basically, uh, this can be the 1x diode, or this can be the nx diode. There are two possible ways. So let's see what is the difference in the two. Let me copy this. So let's say first. That is getting equal because of this current source, right? Think about it. This current is going here. It's getting buffered by this guy. That generates required gate voltage, and that is pushing the same current. Again, ignoring channel length modulation. Right? So first order, it's okay if you have long channel lengths. This this works reasonably well. So let's uh, make one possible variant of this. So I'll do the same thing. I have. Okay, let me plan it properly. Okay. okay. So let us say I connect it this way. Let's see what's going to happen. Again, I'll move to another page. Let me just hold on. So here, we can make one interesting thing. Let us say I break a loop here. Again, as you can see, this is a negative feedback loop. There is, I mean, there is a feedback, right? Whether it's positive, negative, we'll see. So let's see what's happening in this feedback. So let us say I uh, go and increase this voltage. What will happen to this voltage? That will drop. Gate of the PMOS drops. What will happen to this guy? That will increase. So, what kind of feedback is this? It's a positive feedback. Okay. So, let us see what is the uh, loop gain with this positive feedback. Right. So, again, for that, I'll uh, assume that I have test voltage here, and I'll see what is returning back. So, we'll do small signal stuff. So, in small signals, how can I replace this diode as? Resistor again, uh, you know, if you have a DJT or something, you diode connected, it's 1 by GM, some small resistance. So, let me replace that. RD, RD, okay. 
so yeah if i apply a test voltage here what will be the incremental current flowing here it is this what is the current flowing here i mean if this was ground what would be the current gm now i have a source resistor here what is the gm okay simple again what is this voltage <coughs> gm yeah yeah so what is this voltage first the simple source follower so gm rd by 1 plus gm rd so what is the current ha huh? divided by rd so that's basically gm by 1 plus gm rd again remember this is a source degeneration for linearizing gm we saw if this portion is very large the gm becomes i mean gm r is very large what does it become 1 by r same thing but of course this diode resistor is going to be small okay so then what is this voltage yeah sorry correct thank you so this is the current so what is this voltage minus vt let us say this is gmn okay let me just what gmn by gmp because the impedance is gmp okay so what is uh, this current that going that's going to be same as this current here so that is basically vt times gmn by ready so what will be this voltage i mean we have some current flowing what is the total resistor here remember this is now a two terminal element and as we saw both sides the same impedance so it's bilateral kind of thing so what is the total resistor here 1 by gm plus r1 plus rd right so if i find the total loop gain uh that is going to be gmn by 1 plus gmn times rd times the resistor 1 by gmn plus r1 plus rd sorry no no that is here right but this is mirroring the same current the total current is same but if you look at each each individual diode the current is 1 nth okay the currents here are same that is mirrored by that is ensured by the pmos current source so now we have something again remember the diode resistor is going to be small in small signals fine so uh, this product is going to be very small so then can you tell me i mean basically which means i can i'll ignore this ignore this so uh, do you think the magnitude of this will be greater than 1 or less than 1 you finally end up with 1 plus gm on r1 and this could be easily greater than 1 okay so the loop gain here can easily become greater than 1 and this is a positive feedback loop gain remember so this is not a great news right so let's see what will happen if i uh, flip the connection so for that i'll take this <coughs> for flipping the connection this this fine so okay i just flip the circuit and made it like this so let's do the same thing so here if i increase this voltage what will happen to this voltage hmm that will decrease this will decrease what will happen to this voltage so here also there is positive feedback i mean i just made it flipped nothing will change but let's see what is the magnitude of the loop gain so here again i'll replace it with small resistors let's say some rd and rd fine so uh, if i apply a test voltage here what is the current flowing here what is the small signal current gmn by gmn times r1 plus rd times vt again now uh, this current is going to get mirrored here right so if i call it some ix this will also be ix 
So what will be the return voltage here? Ix times what resistance? 1 by Gm plus Rd. Right. So let us uh, simplify this. If I do that, I will have Gmn. So if I find the loop gain, I will make some space. We find the loop gain, I will have Gmn by 1 plus Gmn times R1 plus Rd times this guy. Fine. So once again, let us see a uh, rough order of magnitude. So Rd is going to be small, let us say I ignore it. So what is this approximately? Yeah, 1 plus gm n times r1. So now do you think this is greater than 1 or less than 1? This is definitely less than 1. Right? So here the uh, loop gain magnitude if you see, although we have a positive feedback, the uh, magnitude of the positive, I mean the loop gain is less than 1. So do you think this is good or the previous one is good? This guy is good. So remember having positive feedback is not such a bad thing as long as the loop gain's magnitude is less than 1, right. Again this because I mean if you have some positive feedback like this, right, let us say the loop gain is something, loop gain is some k, right. So essentially if you apply something here, I mean let us say some v, apply some v here, the loop, loop will feed back k times v, right and then it will feed back k square times v. This will all happen instantaneously, right. Now this is a geometric series. When will this converge? Only if k is less than 1, okay. So essentially as long as you make sure that the loop gain in positive feedback is less than 1, it is typically okay. So let me copy this once again. Uh, so the actual circuit is the ULTA, uh, this is the final circuit. Again see uh, other way to interpret this is, see here there is definitely positive feedback, but you also see some negative feedback happening here, something that is giving some kind of negative feedback. Uh, okay. That is, you, uh, okay, in the sense you get the direct connection by, uh, and I mean, through negative feedback, but this act of putting it is not giving any negative feedback, right? Because the moment you put it, it becomes a resistor. This is not acting like a transistor, now it is small signal resistor, right? Some other place, ah, this source degeneration, as you know, it is negative feedback, right? So here, although they have a positive feedback, this guy is giving a negative feedback and in fact if you see the loop gain, you get 1 by 1 plus gmr and that is happening because you have the source degeneration. So you can argue that you also have negative feedback that is kind of bringing the loop gains, I mean positive feedbacks loop gain smaller. Okay. Because in the opposite, I mean when you did the opposite connection, we had something like this. Here there is no source regeneration because the moment you connect it here, this is a resistor. Now there is no negative feedback happening. This is basically 1 by gm R1 and Rd in series. So here you only had positive feedback, whereas here one might argue that along with the positive feedback generated by this uh, connection, you also have some kind of negative feedback introduced by this guy. So overall the magnitude of the positive feedback loop gain this less than 1, right. So yeah, so this is uh, one way in which you can make band gap. So essentially now you have this current, this is p tat. So you can kind of, you know, mirror the currents and get the output voltage. Essentially whatever you did with op amp, in principle you can do with this connection. Again that is ignoring channel length modulation, but with 
channel length modulation this voltage will not be equal this current will not be mirrored correctly will have all sorts of issues now of course one easy way to uh, tackle channel modulation uh, i mean how do you make this a better current source or better current mirror ha huh? ah that is basically if you add a current buffer what what structure it becomes it's a cascode so instead of doing this you can basically add a cascode to make it slightly better so that also we can do so do this you kind of have a cascode for pmos and then do this okay i think i missed it up yeah similarly for the nmos also you can have a cascode and loops okay. so bottom line when you have this kind of uh, connections you make sure that there is it yeah let's say look at this if you have this kind of connection make sure that uh, the nmos direct connection here is happening at a place where the resistance is small right because here is where you need to have source regeneration loosely speaking so you need to make sure that this guy has large enough source resistance that's all that's one way to quickly remember because if you flip it around it will not work because you love positive feedback greater than 1 and that means all the voltages will kind of reach zero on vdd cool so yeah so this is another variant so let me go to the old circuit wherever i had it so let's say take this guy huh can you explain the negative feedback okay okay i mean if you just had something let me just take this alone maybe that will I mean the idea is if you increase this voltage initially the current here will tend to increase but that will also increase the source voltage so that will bring down the current back right correct i mean ideally finally see remember you want if you finally find the positive feedback loop gain here we ended up with this term if you have a higher gmr the loop gain is lesser and lesser i mean the loop gain is more and more weaker right positive feedback so if you have a larger gmr product the positive feedback loop gain is going to be very small it will be more and more weaker that's the idea i mean that's one way in which you can interpret it again there are multiple ways right it's like an art you see it you interpret whatever way you want as long as you get an understanding of it it's fine right. yeah exactly okay uh, so yeah let me actually re copy it let's see if i copy it ah, okay so here let's say this is the band gap we had let's get back to op amps because op amps are nice so now uh, this is giving equal to the i mean this will give an voltage equal to the band gap of the semiconductor and what is this voltage approximately let's say 1.1 or 1.2 volts so if this voltage should be 1.2 volt what do you think this voltage supply should be at least yeah at least i mean it should be greater than 1.2 volt right this should be greater than 1.2 volts so that kind of puts a restriction on the supply so which means if you have supplies less than 1 volt this circuit as such cannot be used right also you will have cases where uh, you don't need an output exactly to be 1.2 volt that is you don't need band gap voltage but you might need a fraction of the band gap let us say you need let us say 0.9 volts or 0.8 volts or something so that will require for you to generate fractions of this band gap so let's see how uh, you can go about doing that so for that let me take the same circuit there is everything 
So let's actually write what is the output voltage here. So this is the output, the P tat current times R2 plus the C tat voltage. And what is the current P tat current here? I mean, what is the P tat current? Yeah, VEB1 minus VEB2. Uh, by R1, this is times R2 plus VEB. Right? Now let us say my goal is to not get this exact band gap voltage, but a fraction of it. So let us say I want this by some gain G. Let me use different color maybe. Right? So basically I have to divide both sides by G. Right? Now uh, you tell me, how can I, uh, I mean basically now the P tat current should be this. What can I, what change I can make here so that the current becomes this much? I mean earlier the, what was the P tat current? Vb1 minus Vb2 by R1. Now what is the current I want? So what do I do? Simple fix. Huh? I mean earlier I had delta Vb by R1. Now I want delta Vb by G times R1. What is the simple change I can make? I replace R1 by G times R1, fine. So this I'll make it as let us say G times R1. That will take care of the first part, right? Now the second part, let's look at this. This is VEB1 by G, right? And remember uh, some gain is what I want, right? And typically you don't want this gain to be, uh, I mean how do you want this gain to be realized as so that it's not dependent on temperature if you don't want this gain to depend on temperature how can i huh? ratio of two resistors right that's all so what i'm doing is i'll replace this guy uh, let me write it again so v out by g this i'll say delta v b by g times r1 times r2 plus i'll have v b by I need to put ratios of two resistors. So let us say that is Rx, some Ry, right? Now let's uh, see if we can do something better. So I have this as the P tat current. What can you say about this portion? That current is a C tat current. So if you see, I have P tat current passing through R2. I have C tat current passing through Ry getting added. So is there a simpler choice, is there an easy choice for RY so that I can make it simpler? Huh? If I make it equal to R2, so basically if I make it equal to R2, then you see this is basically the P tat current plus the C tat current, right? See otherwise I will have to go and add two voltages, here I need to add two currents. And adding two currents, as you know, it's quite easy. It's Kirchhoff's current law. Pushing two currents into a node, it gets added, right? So uh, I already have the P tat current here, right? Let me get rid of this guy. So now tell me, how can I get a C tat current? I need to get a current which is the EB1 by Rx. What can I do to get V E B one by R X? Put R huh? where? Yeah. So essentially, let us say I put uh, a resistor. Let me push it here. I put a resistor R X here. That is going to generate the C T A T current. The total current flowing. So the to to total current here is the P tat plus C tat, right? But can you look at the circuit carefully and see if things are okay or you need to make some other change? Remember the entire premise is based on the fact that we have same currents flowing in the two branches. So current flowing here is I P tat. But what is the current flowing here now? This P tat plus C tat. 
So let me mark it. I have p tat plus c tat. I just need to make sure p tat current flows here. So what change should I do here? I put a same resistor across that, so that bleeds out the exact current. So then you are left with. Let me make some space. Okay, I'll move to another page so that it's neater. So you put another resistor, RX. So which means this will steal the same C tat current and yours. So now you have the currents getting added. Remember, I need to take this current and pass it through R2 and get the voltage. So what do you suggest we can do? I mean, have the current total current. I need to make sure this current flows through a resistor R2, and voltage across R2 is what is my final voltage. So how can I get the final voltage now? Okay, I mean, okay, you can put an R2 here, but then the voltage will be across this. You want a single-ended output. Also, the moment you put an R2 here, that is going to limit the supply also, right? So the idea is you want to make sure the circuit works for low supplies. So instead, can I do something? I copy the current to another branch, and then pass through R2. Uh, which ground terminals? Okay. Which one? No, that's what. Where? Where do we want to connect R two? This one. Yeah. 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 Again, see, you can do it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this will work, I think. But again, the issue is supply, right? The idea is you want to have something that works for lower supply voltages, and you can get fractions of the band. Again, uh, you can definitely do that, but which means the supply will have to be you know. Switch. So now you take this, and with this you can generate any fraction of the band gap, and this can also work at relatively low supply voltages. So this is typically called the fractional band gap. So band gap reference is abbreviated as BGR, by the way. Okay. Cool. So that's mainly about band gap. So a couple of minor things about this circuit. Uh, see, here I kind of know how to. I mean, uh, there is yeah. This ratio R2 by R1 kind of decides the gain that matches the slope of the C tat, so that you know you have temperature independency. And remember, this n is also something that is under your control, right? Because the uh, C tat current is V E B one by R X. P tat current is delta V E B, and that is basically V T ln of n, right? Remember this. So, uh, as a designer, you also have choice over this number of diodes that you that you are putting in parallel. And uh, typically, uh, the choice for this n is of the order of of the form k square minus one. That is, uh, you choose it to be eight, fifteen, or something. The reason is because you have n diodes as well as you need to put one more diode. So, totally you have n plus one diodes, right? So let us say you have n plus one diodes. Again, we'll see it during uh, when we discuss layout. But let us say, uh, do you think if I arrange all n plus one diodes like this, it is better, or if I put them like this, it's better? Which one would you prefer? Just from common sense and logic point of view. Bottom one. Why? Huh? Ah, at least less area. And also, I mean, remember that whenever you have two supposedly identical elements, what will be there? There will be mismatch, right? And it turns out again, uh, the mismatch, as you know, standard deviation of all the mismatches, you know, is inversely proportional to the area, right? And it turns out it also depends on how far the elements are placed. Okay, so you want to keep it as compact as possible. 
and also we'll see uh, this kind of arrangement has other advantages so here to have it have a nice compact arrangement it's nice to have a perfect square that's why we typically choose it to be there is i mean uh, just with respect to the layout this is a typical choice and one last thing about the circuit so let me actually take this guy uh, or let me actually take this circuit same case will hold for anything else just one more minute see here if i don't know anything about the circuit right and you try to go you go and try to solve it right so uh, you know negative feedback will enforce this to be veb1 so the current through r1 is veb1 minus veb2 by r1 so i i, I times r1 is basically uh, veb1 minus veb2 and the voltage across diode as you know is vt ln the current plus 1 exactly minus vt ln of what is the current here i1 by i1 by nis plus 1 so if i simplify it i have ir1 is vt ln of i1 by is plus 1 right so now look at the circuit and tell me is there a trivial solution for this everything is i1 okay sorry i made a mistake yeah can you look can you tell me a simple solution that will satisfy this equation i1 is zero if i1 is zero this term is zero this will just become ln of 1 zero so this is also an equally valid solution right so it turns out this circuit indeed has two operating points one is your final nice band gap voltage and the other is this all zero current so you can also have a case where the currents here are are, are all zero okay so which means this voltage is zero this voltage is zero this voltage is zero and the circuit is completely dead okay but luckily it turns out this is not a very stable operating point because let us say uh, there is some disturbance and there is some current injected into this node so then this voltage will increase that will bring down this voltage so current will start to flow and that will establish the operating point so this operating point the all zero operating point it is like you know balancing a ball on a cliff right this is what we call as a meta stable operating point so it is not very stable some minor variations can take it out of it and bring you to the actual required operating point but typically you don't rely on this so you have to have a separate provision that makes sure that the circuit is not in this all zero operating point and kind of you know a uh, circuit kicks up and there are simple circuits they are called startup circuits so the job of the startup circuit is to sense if the operating point voltages and currents are zero if so let us say you push in some small current here and once the circuit is all set up this should be enough this could be as simple as you know connecting a small transistor here right so let us say you connect an appropriate voltage here initially if this voltage is zero it's going to pump in current voltages will increase and after this reaches the required voltage you make sure that this should be off so you connect to an appropriate voltage you can connect it to somewhere here and stuff you can i'll give, you can work out but there are a lot of things you can do but you should be aware of the fact that this could be uh, this all zero operating point is also an equally valid mathematical solution and you need to have separate startup circuit to make sure that your circuit is not stuck there forever and it is brought to like okay so sorry i see right let's stop